this episode of Be The Teacher, how to create a good documentary film. A documentary is any non-fiction video or film that informs viewers about a real-life topic, person, event, or issue. Some documentary films provide us with educational information about things that aren't well known. Others tell detailed stories about important people and or events. Still, Others try to persuade the audience to agree with a certain viewpoint. Whatever subject you choose, filming a documentary can be a serious undertaking. Follow this tutorial for some tips on creating a documentary film you can be proud of. In this video, we will discuss a dozen documentary tips for a dynamic documentary. Tip number one, choose a worthy topic. What will your film be about? Your documentary should try to film subjects and topics that are interesting and to avoid things that are boring or ordinary. This doesn't mean your documentary has to be huge or grandiose. Smaller scale, more intimate documentaries have just as much of an opportunity to resonate with an audience if the story they tell is captivating. For most people, their documentaries focus on subjects that are controversial or not well known or they try to shed new light on a person, issue, or event that the public has largely made its mind up about. Though documentaries are educational, they still have to hold the audience's attention. Here a good topic can do wonders. It would be a bad idea to make a documentary about everyday life in a random small town unless you're really confident you can make the lives of ordinary people interesting and meaningful in some way. A better idea would be to cast the daily life of this small town against the story of a grisly murder that took place there, showing how the town's inhabitants were affected by the crime. Try out your ideas in verbal form first. Start telling your documentary idea in story form to your family and friends. Based on their reaction, you may do one of two things. Scrap the idea completely, or revise it, and move forward. Tip 2. Give your film a purpose. Acclaimed director Carl Spector says, Before filming, ask yourself, what question am I asking and how does this film express my worldview? Good documentaries almost always have a point. Even documentaries about events that happened far in the past can draw connections to the world today. Despite its name, the purpose of a documentary isn't just to document something that occurred. The objective of a documentary shouldn't just be to show that something interesting occurred. A really good documentary should persuade, surprise, question, and or challenge the audience. Try to show why an audience should feel a certain way about the people and things you are filming. Tip 3. Research your topic. Even if you're familiar with your topic, it's still a very smart idea to research it extensively before you begin filming. Read about your topic as much as you can. Watch films about your topic that already exist. Use the internet and any library you have access to to find information. Most importantly, talk to people who know about or are interested in your subject. The stories and details that these people provide will guide the plan for your film. Once you've decided on a general topic you are interested in, use your research to help you narrow your topic down. For example, you may narrow down a documentary about cars to one about a specific group of people who work on classic cars and gather to show them off and talk about them. Narrowly focused documentaries are often easier to film and sometimes easier to make compelling to an audience. You might even want to do a few pre-interviews based on your research. This allows you the opportunity to start developing a story with the main subject's perspectives in mind. Tip number four, write an outline. You don't necessarily need to know exactly how your documentary is going to come together before you start shooting. You may discover things during the process of filming that change your plans or offer new avenues of investigation. However, you should definitely have a plan before you start shooting, including an outline of specific footage you want to shoot. Your plan for shooting should include specific people you want to interview, specific events you want to record as they occur, specific writings, pictures, drawings, music, and or other documents you want to use, and you'll want to get permission to use these from the creators before you add them to your documentary. 
any dramatic recreations you want to shoot. With reenactments, you should search for actors, props, and shooting locations well ahead of time. Having a plan ahead of time will give you extra time to schedule interviews and work around scheduling conflicts. Tip 5. Interview relevant people. Many documentaries devote much of their running time to one-on-one -on -one interviews with people who are knowledgeable about the subject of the documentary. Pick a selection of relevant people to interview and collect as much footage as you can from these interviews. You'll be able to splice this footage throughout the documentary to help prove your point or convey your message. Interviews can be news style, in other words, simply sticking a microphone in someone's face, but you'll probably want to rely more on one-on-one -on -one sit-down interviews, as these give you a chance to control the lighting, staging, and sound quality of your footage, while also allowing your subject to relax, take his or her time, tell stories, etc. If you're stumped for an interview, brainstorm questions based on the basic queries, who, what, why, when, where, and how. Often asking someone these basic questions about your subject will be enough to get him or her to relate an interesting story or some enlightening details. Remember, a good interview should be more like a conversation. As the interviewer, you must be prepared, having done your research and informed yourself, to glean the most information from the interview subject. Tip 6. Film B-roll. You'll want to get secondary footage called B-roll. This can be footage of important objects, interesting processes, or stock footage of historical events. B-roll is important for maintaining the visual fluidity of your documentary and ensuring a brisk pace, as it allows you to keep the film visually active even as the audio lingers on one person's speech. B-roll is especially important if your documentary will make use of extensive voiceover narration. Since you can't play the narration over interview footage without keeping the audience from hearing what your subject is saying, you'll usually lay the voiceover over short stretches of B-roll. You can also use B-roll to mask the flaws in interviews that didn't go perfectly. For instance, if your subject had a coughing fit in the middle of an otherwise great interview, For instance, if your subject had a coughing fit in the middle of an otherwise great interview, during the editing process you can cut the coughing fit out, then set the audio of the interview to B-roll footage masking the cut. Provided you don't break any privacy laws, get as much real-world footage as you can. If you've watched a documentary before, you've surely noticed that the entire movie isn't just footage of interviews and of live events with nothing in between. For instance, there are often shots leading into interviews that establish a mood or show where the interview is taking place by showing the outside of the building, the city skyline, etc. These are called establishing shots, and they are a small but important part of your documentary. We've reached the halfway point. On to tip 7. Shoot dramatic recreations. If there's no real-life footage of an event your documentary discusses, it's acceptable to use actors to recreate the event for your camera, provided the recreation is informed by real-world fact, and it's perfectly clear to the audience that the footage is a recreation. Be reasonable with what you film as a dramatic recreation. Make sure that whatever you commit to film is grounded in reality. Tip 8. Keep a diary. As you film your documentary, keep a diary of how the filming went each day. Include any mistakes you made as well as any unexpected surprises you encountered. Also, consider writing a brief outline for the next day of shooting. If an interview subject said something that makes you want to pursue a new angle for your film, note this. By keeping track of each day's events, you have a better chance of keeping on track and on schedule. Once finished, do a paper storyboard of your footage and make notes of shots to keep and others to discard. Tip 9. Make a new outline for your finished film. Now that you've collected all the footage for your documentary, you need to organize it in an order that is interesting, coherent, and will keep the viewer's attention. Make a detailed shot-by-shot -shot outline to guide the editing process. Provide a coherent narrative for the audience to follow that proves your viewpoint. 
decide which footage will go at the beginning, which will go in the middle, which will go at the end, and which won't go in the film at all. Showcase the most interesting footage while cutting anything that seems meandering, boring, or pointless. The end of your documentary should be something that ties the film's information together in an interesting way and reinforces your key theme. This can be a striking final image or a great memorable comment from an interview. Additional items you will want to include as you outline are voiceovers. Many documentaries use an audio narration as a running thread throughout the film, linking the film's interview and real-life footage in a coherent narrative. Make sure your narration is clear, concise, and understandable. Graphics. Some documentaries use static or animated graphics to convey facts, figures, and statistics directly to the viewer in the form of text. If your documentary is trying to prove a certain argument, you may want to make use of these to relay facts that prove your argument. Use these with restraint. Don't constantly bombard your audience with textual and numerical data. A good rule of thumb is to, whenever possible, show, not tell. Music. Avoid copyrighted music by creating your own, or you can find music on a public domain site or from a musician willing to share his or her talents. Tip 10. Edit your film. You have all the pieces. Now it's time to put them all together. Remove everything that doesn't logically fit into the theme of your film. For instance, you might remove the parts of your interviews that don't directly deal with your film's topic. Take your time during the editing process. Allow yourself plenty of time to get it just right. When you think you're done, sleep on it. Then watch the entire film again and make any other edits you think are necessary. Tip 11. Do a screening. After you've edited your film, you'll probably want to share it. After all, films were meant to be watched. Show your movie to someone you know. This can be a parent, a friend, or someone else whose opinion you trust. Then market your project as broadly as possible. Have a public screening. Rent, beg, or borrow a venue to allow audiences to enjoy your work. Be prepared to get honest feedback. Ask your viewer or viewers to review your movie and tell them not to sugarcoat it. You want to know exactly what they liked and what they didn't like. Get used to rejection and toughen up. After investing countless hours in your documentary, you expect audiences to react and respond. Don't be disappointed if they aren't over the moon about your project. And tip 12. Get inspired. Making a documentary can be a long, arduous process, but it can also be an immensely rewarding one. Shooting a documentary film gives you the chance to entertain and captivate an audience while simultaneously educating it. Moreover, documentaries offer filmmakers a rare chance to change the world in a very real way. A great documentary can illuminate an often ignored societal problem, change the way certain people and events are perceived, and even lead to changes in the way society operates. If you're having difficulty finding the motivation or inspiration to make your own documentary, consider watching or researching influential documentaries. Some of these were and still are seen as divisive and or highly controversial. A good documentary filmmaker welcomes controversy. Some films you may want to investigate, Steve James, Hoop Dreams, Morgan Spurlock's Supersize Me, Michael Moore's Roger and Me, Dinesh D'Souza's Hillary's America. A project you might do in my class is as follows. For one person, you must build a 60-second documentary film with a thematic arc. You must also have four successful moments of B-roll. That is the assignment for one person. I do allow people to work together, but this will require an extra 30 seconds and two additional pieces of B-roll for each additional person. So two people equals 90 seconds, three people equals two minutes, four people equals, well, you get it. And two people equals six B-roll moments, three people equals eight B-roll moments, and four people equals, well, I, I, again, you get it. I grade students on four other areas, theme, B-roll, outline, and research. 
For theme and storyline, students are graded on the verbal essay that they will create. Students will establish a topic, present the topic, hopefully in an unbiased light, referencing facts and research in the process, establish a conclusion, and inspire a change or excite an audience about a theme. B-roll. Students will include the appropriate number of B-roll moments that will align with the narrative and engage the audience. Students will also do an outline before and after. The outline that I require in my class is this, where the title of your project or a working title is placed at the top. Down one column, the student will record what the viewer will see. So, for example, in this column, write the shot type and describe what the viewer is seeing. MS, medium shot, reporter standing in front of a green screen. In the next column, you place what the audience member is hearing. So in this column, write exactly what sounds the viewer hears. If it is someone speaking, ID the person speaking. For example, narrator, welcome to NewTube. For natural sound, write nat sound, saws and power drills. This is the outline form I require in my class. These outlines must be submitted online for my class with Google Classroom before shooting begins and after filming, but before the editing process. And I also ask students to include outlines in their portfolios. Research. Students must submit a bibliography citing two sources for the first student and one additional source for each additional member of the group. Students must use credible sources. That means they have to be sources that are considered trustworthy, like the AP or an encyclopedia. And they can't be, well, you know, lines from a Nicki Minaj song. A great way to format a bibliography is by using www.bibme.org. Language from your source should be included in your film. Students must include an outline and bibliography in their portfolios to score a grade higher than 70%. As a last word, enjoy the process. It is a creative experience, and you will learn from your mistakes. So that's it for this episode of Be the Teacher. You now have a dozen tips for dynamic documentaries. You know to choose a worthy topic, give your film a purpose, research your topic, write an outline, interview relevant people, film b-roll, shoot dramatic recreations, keep a diary, make a new outline for your finished film, edit your film, do a screening, and get inspired. So, I hope you're ready to make your first or next great documentary. And I'll see you next time on Be the Teacher. <laughs>